We are back. We are back. We're back. We are back. We're boosting. And we're boosting. Check out the links below. Yes, definitely do that. Let me see if I can... I gotta redo this thing. Gotta so I don't cut off your chat there. I think that's about it. You go there. I messed up my, my, my thing there. Dang it. What if I do an F? There. Uh, you know what? My low cat got broke. I, I did. I, there's like some, there's like a bug in lolcat. It's not mine. It's a, there's a, there's a lolcat error happening that is not my error. It's not my error. Something to do, something to do with the, the terminal. Oopsie daisy. Apparently there's no lol. <laughs> so today, today is scripting day. We're going to be doing shell scripting. I know you can't read that. So how about this? How about doing this? Um, commands R code. Commands R code starting shell scripting. They are. Commands are code, people. Commands R code. I've been saying it for the last however long, 14 days, 13 days. Today is day 13. Uh, before we get going, just to let you know, tomorrow is Saturday. We don't have a boost tomorrow. We don't have a boost on Sunday either. I'll be online coding like a boss because I've got lots of stuff to do for work and otherwise. Um, however, uh, I will be playing Shenzhen. Uh, I've never played it. I've never coded any assembly of any substance. So it's going to be fun. So if you want to get into electronics and you want to follow along and you laugh at me being the total complete noob, uh, I'm going to be playing Shenzhen. Um uh, to assume that TTY supports special characters. Really? Did not know about tmux use. Uh, I'll have to look at that. I'll have to look at that. That's really cool. Thank you, I am Valor, for telling us about that. Um, so, what are we going to do? <laughs> Does anybody have any pressing questions before we get into this today? Because we got lots to cover. If not, I'm going to jump right into it. Somebody said I look like a skater dude. Uh, a cool skater dude with this hat. They like my hat. Because I am a cool skater dude. <laughs> I I was a cool skater dude. I was. I still have a skateboard. I skate all the time. I skated like last week. My longboard. Yeah. We have a really, we have a really, really great hill right up behind us here. Nice gradual hill. I was out longboarding. And now we have insurance. So, <laughs> so I can take risks. Again, special characters and colors, really. Skateboard stream. I've been trying, Brillin, I have been trying. But Brillin, by the way, I don't mean to call you out, but oh my God, that sponsorship. I mean, do you mind me calling you out? So Brillin just sponsored me on GitHub for a remarkable amount that I, I, I don't know if I want to embarrass him. Uh, I'm so grateful to that. And then I had to look at him going, well, they used to pay they used to pay fifty dollars a session for an hour, <laughs> four times a month. So, you know, assuming you're getting the same value out of everything, uh, yeah, dude, I cannot believe. I, I think you're my I think you're my highest paying sponsor right now. I really really appreciate that. Uh, and you go if you can't maintain that all your all your you know all your all the time, then then I totally understand. Uh, it does make me though. I, I, I'm kind of on the fence. This is a good starting thing. I am kind of on the fence about how much attention to bring to the people who who support you. I know that some people really like the attention, and some people don't. Um, uh, oh, did you apply for the waitlist? <laughs> well, there you go. I'm so sorry, but there will be no more private mentoring. No, if if the closest thing to private mentoring, and I've actually been thinking about doing this off of the boost. So when the boost is over, since we're just shooting the breeze here, when the boost is over, one of the things I've been thinking about doing, just 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 spitballing here, since you're all here for the boost, so this might apply to you, uh, has has been to do some private mentorships online. So we would do live streams 
of you working on stuff and then we would work through it together and I would help you through it. Um, I don't know. But, but for that, I'm still going to do something two hours a day every day that is not the boost. Uh, so I have to figure out what that is. Uh, we probably will go more deeply into coding Go, some of the more uh, medium to upper class things. We probably do some Kubernetes and Docker training. So there's some other things. We have some other things to do, but... But there's a lot of streamers that are already doing this. This isn't unique. There's already a lot of streamers that are doing, uh, you know, online training uh, while people watch, and uh, a voluntary streaming. It would have to. You would have to be. You know, it would have to be a certain type of person that's that's able to to put up with the ribbing and 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 definitely able, willing and able to make failures. You know, openly for everybody to see. And and frankly, I think that's a good thing, right? Uh, being of, no, not afraid of not knowing something. Um, the hard part about this is that most of my mentoring is really boring, as you can see in any number of the videos that I did. Most of the mentoring is giving you a challenge and then checking in with you to see if you did the challenge right. And that might be what we do. What we could do is we could rotate through the community and so we could say any of my sponsors and that includes the $2 a month sponsor. If you can't pay two dollars a month to sponsor me, then then I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I, you know, I'm saying so I will still. I'm not going to hide anything. But my point is, is if you were in that group, then we can like rotate around and we could give you a challenge and say, okay, how did you do on the challenge? And then you say, okay, I did it. Here's my challenge, right? And maybe 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 put out like ten or twenty challenges at a time, and everybody could be working on their challenges, and I could the community could go talk through the challenge and how you solve the challenge, basically CTF stuff, but not CTF. I've actually, hmm, maybe rather than do that, maybe we need to make skillstack.io back into uh, the war game challenge that it was meant to be. And if we do that, you guys can help me build it and then I can help you guys solve it and we could play the the beginner boost skillstack.io. Um, basically, I want to do the try hack. Try hack me has uh, has a, a Linux level that's abysmal. It's just horrible. And I actually want to write some levels for probably over the wire. So a, any number of those things we could do, we could just, we could work on it together and try to work through it. And, but the way I would do it is I would just spot you. I wouldn't actually do the whole thing for you. All right. I, I can talk forever about that. We've already burned up 15 minutes. Uh, we got plenty of time today though. So, so just so you know, today is, here comes a video. All right. So today is, scripting programming our first day of programming we've been doing it all along but today we're actually going to talk about what that means and get started uh, and i will uh i'll put i'll put these people out of there um <laughs> i don't know let's see here so w all right let's do this let's do so we're going to do some scripting today and so the, the the course of the day is going to be, I've been saying it, and I can just get on with it. Okay, fine. All right, so we're going to do some scripting. Let me give you the outline. So where's the boost? You guys know, right? We're on day 13 today. Commands are code, creating shell scripts. So we're going to be doing everything about coding. We're going to talk about that. We're going to do POSIX shell as a universal command interpreter. Uh, what that, what it means to be an interpreter, all of that. We're going to create our first script today. We've already been writing scripts all, all, you know, a little bit, but we're going to actually do it. We're going to try lots of different interpreters. So shell bash Perl, just for fun, even Python, if you want, uh, we'll talk about schmod and the shebang line difference between running and sourcing a script, uh, putting executables in your path so you can run stuff from anywhere and add it, what that means and why that's secure and why you should never put dot slash in your path. Uh, blah, blah, blah. We're going to manage, uh, I should put that in there right now. Never put dot slash in your path. Uh, it's, it, yeah. So, and we're going to talk about jobs. So a running process and what that means. We actually talked a little bit about this another day. So we're just going to repeat that again. And then the, this day 14, that's next Monday. So that's in, uh, not next Monday. It's in two days. And from now we are the weekend coming. And so you can come back and do that. But that is the overview. All right. So let's get right into it. Uh, and we can I can chop this video up as necessary. Um, so a lot of people are excited. People are in the chat, but they're too scared to let me read it because they're they're hiding. They're hiding. They're 
using the exclamation point. So if you don't know, if you can put an exclamation point, uh, there's no bot or anything, but you can do that and you can hide your stuff so it doesn't show up on my my chat box here. Um, let's let's just, just just jump right in. So I don't know how many times I've said it, I'm going to say it again. Every time you execute a command, you're, you're coding. Ls. Uh, let's see. So let's let's do something that's relatively useful. Uh, no hiding for me. <laughs> so so let's say, okay. So let's say I got my README there. We've already done this. So how do we show the first? Oh, go ahead, README. That gives me the first thing. So let's let's actually look at the. Uh, I don't know. Let's let's let's, let's actually write a little program here. Fails to hide. <laughs> so. We have all of these Zettelkast and uh, directories here, and that's can't really read them. So we know that if we do, we, we haven't talked about globs yet, but we know that if we do a head, uh, well, let's try a, a little, well, let's say head, uh, let's just do one at a time. So we're, we're just giving you an example. So then read me, right? That gives all of this, but I just want the first line. So I'm going to do head dash one. And now I have the first line. Okay. Now I want to get rid of the uh, hashtag at the front. So we can pass that. There's many ways to do this, but let's just do, uh, we can do TR. I mean, there's just so many ways. I don't like said, but we could use said. So we do said S. You guys haven't learned said yet. I said, said takes some doing. It's a, it's a, it's, it's, it's not easy for for beginners to learn it. So that's one of the reasons I don't want to do it right now. Uh, it is pretty magical though. So that says delete off that first part. All right. So that's all well and good, right? Well, now I want to do it to another thing. So what if I put a star here? What happens? Wow. Oh, wow. I get them all. That's pretty cool. Um, okay. So I got lots of different things there. Um, but, you know, so that would be cool. So let's say we make uh, a script that we just want to, like, let's see here. Um, let's see, let's do, I'm trying to figure out, okay, so, oh yeah, we have to redirect. I'm trying to, I'm trying to use stuff we've already used before. So redirect to temp um, headers, right? So, and then we could vi temp headers. Again, that's a review of everything we've all done. So go watch the videos if you haven't. We've done all that stuff already. So we have this big old thing here. Uh, I don't like that it prints out every line like that. I wish it would not do that. How can we do that? So, oh, maybe let's grep it out. Okay, so we're gonna grep it out. So let's 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 uh, let's get out. Um, well, there is a better way to do this, but I'm not going to show you right now. Head one, read line. Okay. There's like so many better ways to do this. I'm trying to keep it simple. Though. So let's grep. We're going to grep out all of the, we only want lines that have, uh, begin with a hashtag and then we'll copy, chop those lines up. Oh, oh, the file is there. So I have to override it. Remember exclamation point. Can you see that? There you go. All right, let's do it again. So that's a big old long command line. Um, and this goes temp headers. So there, pretty cool, huh? So it was like, we did a lot of time. We spent a lot of time on that little command line. And I'm, I'm going through this process because this is how, this is the natural process of creating a script. This is how it happens. You have something you need, some bit of information or calculation, and you do it. And then you are like ready to do it again. It's like, man, I wish I had a script that did that, right? So we're going to do that. So the, so we're gonna, I'm, I'm not going to go in any particular order. I'm just going to go ahead and do this. Oh, hey, wait, thank you for the raid. Um, so so here, here we are. We've got, um, we've got this really great command line, right? And... What are we going to do with it? So, by the way, if you have a really great command line like this, uh, is a string to the left uh, of said regex? Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're in the middle of a of a video here, but um, if, if, if but we're actually doing coding today, we're learning how to scale script for the first time today. So, yeah, maybe just recap real quick. I, I thank you for thank you, radiators, raiders, but I gotta um, 
you know, got to move on. <laughs> um, so, so this is how it happens. It started out as a tiny little command, right? Uh, tiny out as, as like, I want to, so I have all these things, right? So I have something I need and I do head and we do the same process again, really quick do this. And I know there's a readme like, Oh, there's too much stuff. So first step, first things first, I'm going to eliminate it. And this is naturally how things happen. Right. And you say, well, gosh, I need to chop off that, that hashtag. So we do said, and we're going to do regular expression, which we will learn, but we, we haven't spent any time on them yet. Um, and that will get rid of that. Like, okay, well, I really need more than just that one. So now I'm going to turn this on and that's going to say, do all of the files that have a readme. And, but then it makes it into this ugly thing. And so then I have to like filter out all the files that the lines that have hashtag in front of them. Otherwise I'll get all the other crap too. So again, it's very, very organic. And now we have it doing what I want to. Now, what I would really love is for that to be, uh, to go to a file or something. You know, if I want to, I could just write it to a file. So, so again, and you'll notice how I'm, whoops, I don't have my keys on. Uh, okay, so so you'll notice that every time I did this, I built it up. So from there to there to there, you know, it's a modification. It's an organic process. And this is what's so great about the Unix philosophy and the command line is you build stuff up like that. And then you get this thing that's like kind of cool. Now, you can just copy and paste this and put it into a script, right? Um, but... Uh, I'm going to show you a secret. If you haven't used any weird quotes in here, you can do this. You can say, you can stick an echo in front of there and whatever quotes you don't have, double quotes or something, and then you can redirect that into a file. And so now we can say, we can say, I'm going to redirect that to what? Titles. Okay. And now when I open titles, I have my code. And every single thing we just did have been covered in other videos up to now. You know, the whole redirection thing and everything. Okay, so we got this uh, we got this file started here. So titles here. And we're going to see what can we do with this thing. Well, so how do I run it now? And, and, and I, if you look at the outline in the boost, you'll see it's very structured and everything. I'm kind of just doing it all mixed together. Um, so we have titles... It's there, but it's not green and it's not blue. It's this white color, right? And if you do an ls-l, these are all things we've done already. It's rw instead of rwx. What does that mean, people? It means what? If there's no x, what does that mean? We talked about it yesterday. <laughs> no edit? No, not quite. You can't execute it. Good. Good one. Okay. So it means it's fine. Good guess. It means it's not executable. It means it can't be run. When you say execute, it's like, it's not like, you know, it's like, not like, not like execute like the queen or something. It's like <laughs> France. So, so to speak, it's like you execute my commands, you know, it's that kind of thing. Uh, like, I don't know, Jean-Luc Picard, engage, execute, you know, that kind of thing. So, so you can't do anything with it. That means it's just a file. It's just meant to be read as far as the computer is concerned. So we need to make it, uh, it's, it's not Saturday for you, maybe. So you can actually run it just the way it is. So I lied. I lied to you. I totally lied. It doesn't have to be executable to run it. You want me to prove it? Watch. Well, what is the shell that we're running right now? It's called bash, right? So I can run bash and just run titles like this. And that says, run the program bash, which we'll talk about, and send it the file titles and run all those commands in there. Okay. Now, if I want to use POSIX instead of bash, I just use sh. Still running it, right? So I told you, everything you do is just a program. Now, we, gotta, we have to talk about this special program that I just used, though. Uh, and it won't do what you told it unless you scold it. Whoosh! Uh, so to be fair, the, true or false, uh, true, true or false titles is running false. Why titles is not actually running. What is running? 
I'm gonna prove it to you. So so like false, right? Because why? So I'm gonna I'm gonna prove it to you. I'm gonna put an infinite loop for just for fun for no reason here. Uh, while true do uh, sleep to done. And now what? Now when I do this, it's gonna run and it's still running. And if I go over here and I actually show this file, remember pgrep? We didn't do this. We did it a little bit. pgrep. Actually, it's coming next. pgrep. We're going to do pgrep title. Oops. No, there's no title. ps-ef grep title. So we're looking at all the things that are running. What is this? So this thing is running right here. It's like you can't really see it. Here, let me make a new pane. So ps uh, uh grep. We're gonna do we're gonna do all this later, but shell. There's all the shells, all the stuff running. So let's do let's grep uh, title. There it is. You see it right there. All right. So so this is what's running, right? Sh titles. And if you want to get right down to it, you can even go into that proc. This is all stuff we covered already. Remember when we talked about the proc file system? Like uh, slash proc is where all the processes are. And you can go look in here, and you can actually ls-l the exe, which is not real, it's a virtual file system, and you can see that the executable for process 36274424, which is our program, and if you want me to prove it's your program, watch this, ls-l cwd, this, this tells you where the process was running. So we can see the process was started from within the boot directory. If you want to see what was actually run, uh, you can cat r, uh, wait, and so any number, any of these things that are here, are all uh, are all information about about how it was run. Uh, you can even access this right here is direct access to the memory of the process. It's crazy. So so sh is eating it. Yep. So I'm trying to think of what, oh the command line. So watch this. So if I do cat cmd line, it told you this is a virtual file system. None of this is real. If I cat virtual files, it says sh titles right. So we could say. Um, uh, let's see, or uh, I don't know. I mean, you, sh it says sh comma titles, so there's kind of a thing being lost there. Um, but but you get you get the point, I think. Um, that you can read or arbitrary to the memory. Yes, you absolutely can if you have access to it. If you have permission to do that, you totally can. That's actually how you hack things, uh, is by changing out the memory of the thing that's running or is going to be run while it's running. A lot of times, people that yeah. So, so yeah, if, if I wanted to like slam it right now, it, it, I might lose my terminal if I do this. You want to try it? Should we dare? Do you dare? We're not doing it. You know what? Let's do it in a turn. Let's do it in a container. We're not even doing this in a container. Oh my gosh. I'm such a bad person. So I'm going to use one of my workspace containers, uh, mem test. I'm going to make a workspace container really quick that uh, with my new workspace tester. So now I'm running in a container. I'm all safe. So, <laughs> so let's go into slash proc and and see what's here. But yeah, so like if you, let's, there's nothing here. There's like, there's only like three processes. Check it out. There's like, there's only like a few. Wait, 109, it's now, wait, 48 still there. What's 48? There's only, like only four processes because it's a container. So I don't even know what it is. ls-l-exe, let's go see what it is. Oh, bash, this is our actual shell. So you want to check the, this out, watch. So we can go cat mem. Oh man. Oh mem. Oh mem. There's nothing there. It's not using any memory. Oh well. Well, anyway. I, you can play. Okay. I mean, you get the point. So let's go back to my my test here since we're for 14 seconds left. Pomo, I'm going to I'm going to recharge you a little bit. Yeah. I'm going to recharge you, Pomo, cuz I'm going to going to be a long video. I'm sorry. But it's going to be most. We got. I want it to be this one to be contiguous. So anyway, uh, the reason word for feces is it really? <laughs> Today I learned. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> I I can't focus now. Okay, so back to focusing. So you can run titles here. <laughs> and then you got your titles, right? Now, let's go back and get rid of that loop. We don't need that. 
So what the point I'm trying to make is that you can run any commands in a, in a text file by giving the name of the file to a special program called the interpreter. Dun, 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 the interpreter. Okay, the interpreter thinks C3PO. Why, of course I can. Do you speak bocce? Why, of course you can. It's like a second language to me, sir. I, I'm kind of sending it over 12,000 things. What's, what's C3PO's job? What's his job? His job is to interpret for the droids like R2-D2 who don't speak English, even though everybody understands him. And and then what? So so he's a protocol droid. His whole job is to translate. Yeah. His job is to translate not just languages, but customs and all kinds of stuff. That's what protocol is. Had a way of communicating things that must be done in a certain order and everything. So, and he's also an interpreter. An interpreter here's like you know, like in star trek or something you got the universal translator right well that's kind of a misnomer because it's a it, it's a tra translator is for written by the way i'm a real pedantic person on this translation is for writing interpreting is for speaking so or did i get that wrong he's my trans this is my personal translator my personal interpreter i don't know suffice it to say that the interpreter is the thing that runs the commands in another language gives it puts it into a different language and so what do we mean by that so what by saying that sh uh oh by saying that sh is an interpreter what sh is interpreting is the lines in english of the commands that we can understand in the titles file and it converts those it translates interprets those into machine language pretty amazing when you think about it actually truthfully speaking it converts them into at the lowest level, system calls, and then the system calls are interpreted by the kernel, and the kernel interprets the system calls into binary, and the binary get, goes straight to the device. That's that's how it all happens. There's a lot of interpreting going on, and it happens at the speed of light, so you can't even tell. So that's what an interpreter is. So when someone says, is this language interpreted, what would you tell them? Let me give you a question here. So is Python, let me just ask some questions here. Is Python an interpreted language? Yes or no? True or false? Is Python an interpreted language? Yes. Why? Because you can make another language with a Python command in it, right? So let's do Python. So we say, let's just say titles.p. Uh, yeah, there's a little catch there, though, because every language is interpreted at some level. Uh, in fact, Python has bytecode, which is, uh, which is um, compiled but I don't, I don't want to go there. I, for this, for all, all intents and purposes, yes. So print hello, right? So, so there, I'm going to use the Python interpreter. Uh, uh oh, core dumped. <laughs> that was fun. Uh, I don't think I've had that happen in a long time. What? A, there we go. That's much better. Python three. <laughs> Good old Python. Uh, Python 3 is happier. All right, so what, what happens if I send titles.py to the shell when I cross the streams, I send it to the shell, to the shell interpreter? It's like, I don't know what you're doing. What if I try to do Python? I mean, I know I'm beating this dead horse here, but what if I try to do the other one with that one? No, I can't see. I got syntax errors. What's syntax? What does syntax mean? I know it's going to be hard for you to write. What is syntax? Syntax is how grammar rules. Good. That's really good. Syntax, the order of words in a sentence, the grammar rules, how things go, in what order interpreter can interpret the code. It can't write because it doesn't know the syntax. So, um, so requirements of the tokenizer, yes. Ooh. So if you don't know the syntax of a language, whether it's English or Python, you might make mistakes. It's grammar is a rough translation, but it's more precise than that. Syntax is like the colon goes here, uh, the period goes here, the semicolon goes here. Syntax error. So the syntax error means that there's something not right about how you're writing it, and the it can't even be parsed. It can't even be chopped up into little tokens like like Brillen said there, and something else happened to it. So that so now you know what's going on. In fact. That's what the interpreter does. The interpreter parses that as fast as possible and parses that all of that writing, you know, the characters, the ones and zeros that are 
interpreted from the characters. And it turns those into a whole bunch of tokens. And then it applies a syntax tree uh, with a bunch of rules about, and it converts that into logic. It has a bunch of, the interpreter has a bunch of code inside of it already that matches with whatever that is. And then that turns that into calls and it passes it on down the line to the next thing. And in this case, the next thing is a system call to the kernel. So, and then the system kernel calls or get interpreted as well. And then the kernel does this thing. It, it translates it for the devices. The devices get the ones and zeros the way they want. And then they, the devices actually do their things and vice versa. So I, I'm spending a lot of time on this, but, but this is super important that you understand uh, this. And, and at the same time, you can understand the language of programmers by, by getting this. So uh, let's do a go one really quick, just for fun, just to, while we're on this topic. So uh, let's do titles and go. So um, uh, we'll just say, I, I, I don't, not titles, let's just do, I mean, it would be a lot harder to do all the whole thing. I think I'm just going to do something small. By I, V I, hello dot go. Uh, so there we get uh, them go. We can say hello. And and then we can just do this. We can say, now it goes kind of weird because it actually can be run like an interpreter if you want, uh, which is just like Python, right? The crazy thing about that is Go's compiler is faster than Python's. <laughs> so Go can be run as faster than Python code as an interpreter language, even though it's not meant to do that. So it's kind of cool. It's got the fastest compiler in history. It's amazing. Uh, bootstrapping, yeah. So now we're going to go, we're going to build this. So we're going to build hello.go, and that will build us a file called hello, which is all red. And I did this on purpose because we're going to lead into the next thing. So why is that file red? Uh, you can do it. People have done it, Ivory Jam. Yeah, there's people that have done it already. So... Why, what's wrong with this? This one has got X in it, right? But if but if we try to edit it, should we try to edit it? Oh my gosh, what is this? What is this, people? What is this? Can't edit that, right? So so this is what's called an elf binary because of the elf right here, right? And so the program, the, the, the kernel operating system looks at the first few bytes of the file to decide what to do. And when it looks at this file, it's like, oh, this is an elf binary. Okay, I know what to do with you. And it jams that, that data, that binary data, right into memory, system memory. And, um, but when you do that with titles, it can't do that. But, but I want, so the real clear thing here is I can do dot slash hello and I can run it. Can I do dot slash titles? Whoops. Can I do this one? Can I do dot slash titles? Nope. Why not? The reason you can't do that is because as far as the computer is concerned, it still thinks it's just a text file. So for interpreted scripts, and that's what the topic for today is, they have to be given extra hints. And those hints are what's going to tell the computer, I can run you. Okay. And, and one of them is let's make it executable. We already know about how to do that. We did that yesterday. Plus X titles. Oh. All right. So now I can run it, right? Oh, I can get the name right. All right. So it ran. Yay. Okay. So now we're all good. So now it ran, right? That's all we needed to do with the titles, but I have a catch. I'm going to, I'm going to break it. Watch this. So remember our Python one? Well, why don't we just do the same for that? Anybody know what's going to happen? Anybody want to guess what's going to happen when we try to do this with titles? So dot slash titles, right? That worked for the other one. What's going to happen? Is it going to run? Yes or no? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, Inceptioner then. You got it. One. Good call. Good call. It's going to try to run it, but it gives you a syntax error. Why? Because by default... All of this stuff is running under bash. And so bash is the default. Every single line of code that we type is bash. If I try to type print hello here in, in Python, it's not going to like it, right? Like, sorry, you got an error there. I don't know what you're talking about. However, if I were to run the Python interpreter, check this out, print. There's actually a REPL for Python and it works just fine. So the moral of the story is this. You have to, it's not just enough to give it an executable. 
you also have to make it executable with the schmod plus x. It also needs a hint. And you already know I'm going to give you a hint about what the hint is. Because the hint in Go is the elf stuff at the very, very beginning, right? So we need to give these files some sort of hint at the very, very beginning of the file that's going to tell the computer, uh, here's what I want you to do with this. And that is the shebang line. Now, the shebang line is literally the bits of the shebang are recognized by the computer as saying, oh, get ready. Here comes the name of the interpreter that I would run on the command line. And to prove this, I'm going to show you, you don't actually have to put everything in there. You can do it like that. It's bad form to do that, but you can do that. Oh, bad interpreter. Yeah, in fact, it gets, it's it's caught too much. Too. I think it has to be, actually, never mind. It has to be an exe. So sh, sh, when you do, I'm sorry, I, I, I told you wrong. So when you do sh titles, that's the same. If you do which sh, it'll tell you that that's what it's doing. So it's really doing this. This is what it's really doing. That's what it's really doing. SH, user bin SH titles, right? They're the same. It's just short, a short version of that. So so what we're going to do is we're going to, and I, I forgot that you have to have the full path to do EXEs, so, so let's do that. Uh, there are some people who will try to get away with it. User bin SH or bin SH. User bin SH or bin SH. Actually, these days, uh, you, if for POSIX shell scripts, you should always use bin SH. Bin SH is universal. Uh, and we're not going to get into the ENV thing right now. We'll talk about that later. So this says, the computer comes around on this file, and the first thing it looks for is it says, oh, you're executable. Okay, let me, let's me let do this. And then it looks for the first bit and says, well, what kind of thing, do, what, what do you, how, you know, wh what am I going to do here? If it doesn't see anything, it goes, okay, you're a shell. I'll just run you. But if it, if it sees that, you know, in the case of this one, we didn't really need it, right? So, but you kind of want that because what happens if, whoops, what happens, oopsie, what happens if I have a different shell? So what happens if I'm running a TC, a TC shell or something like that, right? Uh, bin SH, bin SH is, is, is everywhere, uh, as far as I know. I mean, that's I, 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 I could be wrong, but, you know. So, uh, so titles.py, again, it doesn't work, right? Dot slash titles.py needs a hint. It needs a shebang line. Where does the term shebang line come from, by the way? So, sh and the bang. Sh for hashtag, bang for exclamation point. And there's a bunch of slang terms for these things. Exclamation points, bang. Uh, that's a splat if you're a hacker or a star, you know. Uh, slash, backslash, whack and back whack. Brackets. Those are square brackets, curly brackets. Sometimes people call those braces. There's uh, lots of different names to go. Tack. No, I don't. I, I, people do tack. I don't like tack. Tack uh, or hyphen uh, dot, of course. God, there's so many. Tilde is squiggle sometimes. Let's just do them all real quick. Uh, at sign hashtag. What's the true name of a hashtag, by the way? For 50 points, what's the true name of a hashtag? Octothorpe. Octothorpe. <laughs> That's, it is the pound sign, but it's actually, here's, here's another one. Here's another one. Okay. For, for 75 points, what did I just type? And what is this? <laughs> this is a fun one. I really love this one. Well, we're going to come back to this when we do, when we do ASCII. Nope. It is not an apostrophe and it's not an octothorpe. The octothorpe we already did. What is this right here? It's not a double and a quote. No, go look it up. It's a prime. Lie wins the points. Lie, win, lie wins the points. Lie wins the points. The actual character in the ASCII, it's not an apostrophe. We use it like an apostrophe in a double quote and a single quote. But the actual value is prime. It's prime. So an up and down quote-ish kind of thing is prime. So prime and double prime, as in longitude and latitude. So if you're if you're using these for anything but longitude and latitude, you're doing it wrong. Which means the whole entire world is doing it wrong. <laughs> because nobody wants to type the actual left quotes and right quotes and all that stuff, right? And you can't actually do that. I don't know if you saw, but when I when I do editing. So let me let me find some quotes here. So there is what see see there? See there? That's like an actual quote. 
but nobody types it because it's too impossibly hard to type. Pandoc will convert them for you, so your typo typographer will be happy with you. But uh, as if that mattered anymore. Anyway, back to what we were doing. Uh, uh, back tick. Oh, back tick. Right, back tick. We didn't get that one in there. No, no. A good call. Good call. Okay, so, 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 so. We're going to do titles.py. So we got, oh, this is clearly not a very good, that's not a very good shebang line, is it? <laughs> we got we got stuck on the names of things. Okay, so let's make a shebang line. What do you think it is over here? Well, if you don't remember, don't guess. Um, I need to wrap around quotes with Vim. Uh, we're going to talk about it later. Uh, we did Vim yesterday. So we're, we're on uh, scripting today. We'll come back to that. Um, all right, people. Okay, so we know there's Python on the system. We were know we know this worked, right? Python three, title.py, right? We know that worked, but which Python is it? Well, there happens to be a command called which Python three, and like, oh, okay, I'll use that one. All right, so now we're gonna do which Python three titles.py, and we'll put this here, and. The, I'm just using my mouse. I know I'm 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 ashamed. So so now what? Now can we just do titles? Nope. Why not? It doesn't know where it is. So we're gonna do dot slash titles. Dot py and it gets it. It does it. All right. Now there's a couple. By the way, it's it always annoys me when people put dot py at the end of their files. Uh, now we kind of have to because, you know. I, I hate it when people put there is in it's a non Unix Linux thing. It is a it's already schmodded. It's a non Unix and Linux thing to have extensions at the end of your executables. It, you'll see it, you'll see it a lot, but there, the only requirement for that is on Windows for it to get the syntax right or something. And by the way, VI will get the syntax off the shebang line if 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 there's no thing at the end or it doesn't recognize what it is. Uh, move titles. You can, but that will thank you. Good one, Juan. That will blow out our bash titles, though. So for this moment, I'm going to leave it separately. There is one last thing to tell you about. So let's say your buddy's on a Mac and he doesn't use the GNU utilities, and so his Python is on user local bin Python, but on your computer, nope, bad interpreter, can't find it. So the all I actually hate that people do this, but th you're going to see it a lot, so I'm going to explain it to you. So, so the way to get around that is to use user bin env python three. Now, uh, this is pretty standard across the board for people that are going to share scripts. If you're not sharing scripts, please, please don't do that. It's really, really insecure, and it's a slower. It takes a sub process to do it. Uh, this is a this is a, a hack that the Ruby community came up up with in 2000 something, and and it's just stuck. And now everybody does it. They do it for Perl and Python and and everything. And and I really it's really insecure. It's bad. I don't do it. Uh, I if you can help it now, I still do it when I know that my script is going to have to be curled down and run by somebody. And you know, but any any case where I know the person is going to be modifying the file and they can spend two minutes to change the line fine i let him change the line but if if it's really really got a broad audience and it has to just work i will break down and put that in there but you know it's usually better for you to use uh you know bin sh uh you know user bin bash um you know, those kind of things okay but but i i do want you to see it because it is it is quite quite prevalent out there and you'll be wondering what's going on um so i'm going to add uh what's uh up with User bin env. Now the the, uh, the the last thing on that um, I'll tell you. So when you do env and you run it, normally env shows you your environment variables. And mine's all messed up because of my my less colors that are in here. But normally that will show your environment variables. But if you if you put a command after it, it will share. It will uh it will it will um open up that program wherever it is. So in this case, it's here. So it opens up Perl wherever it is. Uh, if I do Python, it will open up Python wherever it is. If I do Node, I think I have Node on here, uh, JS, it will open up Node.js wherever it is. Console.log, um, some, yep. 
So you did. It was at six thirty. So all right. So we're we're doing videos right now, and and I gotta kind of keep going. What's a big video? <laughs> D. Okay, Control D was it was the winner. So I hope that that has been enough to get you to get you going. If you have to rewatch this, I I went really slow. Uh, because I want it to stick. Uh, a lot of people will think this is really remedial. I apologize to those people, but you're, you're in the wrong place if this is remedial for you. Um, so, yeah. Uh, second day boost, and I keep missing the MA. <laughs> Sorry. Um, okay, so hello, hello.go. We got them all there. Now, go, when you compile go, it automatically schmods it for you. That's the secret that's happening. That's why you get that. If you were compiling C code, it would do the same thing. Um, and and that um so i think it's time to take a break and we'll come back and start to put more stuff inside of our code of our scripts and um so we did the interpreter let's make sure we didn't forget anything uh we talked about uh commands or just functions we talked about posix uh we, we've talked a lot about why to use posix and born we're going to come back. we'll talk more about that when we come back uh, we talked about all these different things you can use. Awk, Perl, Ruby. These are all interpreted shell scripting languages that you can use. Um, we'll, get, we'll touch the history again because we're going to start writing the syntax and when we start writing uh, bin sh instead of bin bash or whatever. What does interpreted mean? We tried all of these things. We actually tried it with uh, Python instead. So, so yeah, Python 3 or whatever. Um, I'm going to leave Perl in there. Next time I'm going to do Perl. Python 3. Just for bonus. Uh, relative file paths are bad. Uh, and no, you use it. No, we're going to talk about that. We're talking about relative paths and stuff like that. Uh, we're going to, sourcing and pathing is coming up next. And we'll talk all about that. Uh, I think we're pretty much done with the first half. So, so we have about a half an hour left. Uh, I'm going to take a five minute break. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to force you to, watch a, a video or something. I don't know. And I'm just going to stand up and walk around and we'll come back and we'll do, we have two big things to cover, um, uh, path and backgrounding processes. And that's, those are pretty much the biggest things left in the history of shell. And when we do that, we'll, we can cover that in half an hour. Easy. All right. Take a break.
You can hear me crunch. Crunchy, crunch, crunch. My Pomo is so mad at me. Not too mad. I need to make it so that, like it gets it turns like into something different. <laughs> it gets even madder. Did you know the TLDR package? Wow. That looks really cool. Simplify the community driven man pages. Nice. Wow. That's a great thing. No jazz, of course. I mean, leave it to the JavaScript community to make things simpler and prettier. <laughs> Meanwhile, they make Cora JavaScript only. All right, no ranting right now. I'll say that for another day. I gotta be on. I gotta be good. There's people watching. All right, let's get back. Um, very interesting stuff. I'm going to go ahead and start the POMO. POMO start. And this is truly the end when this comes up uh, or so. So I got to be on my on my game here. All right. So let's, what are we doing now? What are we doing? We're, first of all, let's talk about the history. All right. So your fastest history lesson ever. So Shell, so POSIX Shell was the very first Shell uh, or Born Shell, B-O-U-R-N-E. Uh, was the first shell and you can go read about this again the purpose of the boost is to tell you what you should know about not everything about the thing uh, so you should probably know about the born shell what it is where it came from uh, you should know what POSIX means where that word came from what is it was it about why would you do POSIX shell we're going to talk about that that's important to have a particular take on that and uh, and where it came from actually the shell a lot of the syntax from shell came from a language called algol a-l-g-o-l g-o-l uh, and that's where we get the weird syntax that we're going to see a little bit later on Monday. Um, but because there's been languages around for a long time. Um, if you're uh, a fan of Brian Kentrill, he actually obsesses over old archaic languages. He talks about them in Rust. Is it time to redo the operating system in Rust? It's a video which I strongly encourage you to go watch. It had me laughing like crazy. One of my favorite videos of all time, uh, including his discussion of the dark times of object-oriented programming. But I digress. Anyway, so Shell started at Born. We also have uh, a bunch of Born Shell, POSIX compatible shells today. Uh, they're more common. So Ash and Dash, Almquist Shell, and Debian Almquist Shell uh, were brought about. Um, and by the way, Born Shell is not Bash. Born Shell, uh, Bash is Born Again Shell. So it was a retake on Born shell uh corn shell you ks sage nobody remembers this but ks sage was all the rage for a very long time there was other shells tc shell c shell yeah there was actually a shell where every, every command was a c line no kidding <laughs> and there was another tickle shell tcl it was a different language anyway just be happy that we got the ones that we did uh despite their sort of quirky syntax so but i need to tell you that there's a really important part of this history uh, Bash uh, was thrown off of Debian uh, and it was only allowed to stay on Debian systems as an interactive shell. And I don't know the full story, uh, but last I heard, rumor has it that it slowed down boot time so substantially that they threw it out and they went with Debian Alnqua shell, uh, which is just like kick butt fast. It's like spectacularly fast. Even though it has more subshells and stuff, it's still really, really, really fast. And that's the shell we're going to be using today. Now, most systems, bin sh, will be linked to those shells. So if you do bin sh, you'll see that it's pointing to one of these other systems. Okay. Now, if you're on if you're on BusyBox, uh, you'll see that that file is not. So you'll see that it's actually. A, here's a here's a giveaway right here. It's a it's a hard link 
to a program that's actually called BusyBox. Uh, and so, yeah, we can do we can do this, we can do this, uh, LS, which BusyBox, and you'll see, oopsie, dash L. Uh, and you can see that it's the same exact file because it's using multi-call. So it's not always that way. Sometimes it's ex some extra thing that's been insta installed. If you're on an actual Debian system, uh, it's 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 always going to be Debian Uncle Shell or Uncle Shell. Uh, yeah. All right. So what else have we got? Um, so, I mean, we have we have lots of stuff there to look at. Uh, I mean, I, I I don't have to. Sh I mean, look, there's 2020, right? So let's do this. Let's let's run Ubuntu. Well, I can show you on here. So let's let's look at how big um, uh, bin bash is. So look at that, <laughs> one point two megabytes. All right. So compared to dash, uh, which is a, a link. So we have to do uh, bin dash. Wait. LS dash, LS dash, wait, dash L, bin dash. So dash is 123K compared to 1.2 megabytes. And as much as I love bash syntax and all the stuff it added on, um, it's just not worth it, particularly for a beginner. Um, sometimes it is, so, so you just, so it's good. You should learn, this is the bottom line. You should learn POSIX first, POSIX shell first, and get really good with it. And then you can know very specifically what the difference between POSIX is from bash. There's a lot of bashisms that'll sneak in. They're so close. So I use one bracket or two brackets. Why? What's the difference? All Understanding all those subtleties is a lot of work. So just start by learning POSIX first and understand the dangers of POSIX shell, which has some really significant dangers. And we'll go through all of those next week. And... And then layer on top of that, Bash or Z Shell, which is Corn Shell compatible. Corn Shell, I had to put there in the list because that's what led to Corn Shell was the first shell that said, no, we want something more. And they 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 basically did it off the other one and it became the standard for a very, very long time. Uh, okay, so that's the history. Uh, Z Shell actually tried to redo Bash uh, early on in the process and they've been going at it since the 90s. Uh, Z shell got, uh, I, I believe, I don't know, but Z shell got, I believe Z shell got a lot of attention recently because it's not GPL version three. Uh, I, we know for damn sure that that's why Apple went with Z shell instead of, instead of, uh, GPL V3. In fact, the, there's substantial evidence to suggest that because, because bash on Apple was locked at version two. Uh, which was the last version to release under GPL v2 or something. And so the people at Apple are like, no, we just do not want to mess around with those new GNU licenses, which directly affect hardware uh, and were designed to affect hardware. And so they've abandoned it and they went with Z-Shell. Uh, it's not because Z-Shell is better. Z-Shell has got a lot of really cool things in it. I really love it. Uh, there's many pieces of it that I really love, but I don't love it enough uh, to not use either the shell that will work everywhere, POSIX, or the shell that's the standard on all Linux systems, Bash. Uh, so if, you know, if somebody's going to use Z-Shell. For your interactive shell, fine. But for scripting, why would you? Why would you sh Why would you do bin ZSH? That doesn't make any sense at all. Uh, especially since it's designed to be compatible. So they even encourage you to use bin SH for that kind of stuff. Uh, and that's another reason to use POSIX because your shell scripts will work with people who have bash and people, your friends on Z shell. So if they have Z shell, great. If they have K shell, great. It'll work. It'll just work everywhere. Uh, for 10 years at IBM, I was required to only write in POSIX shell at pain of death. You know, <laughs> if you, if you didn't, because it had to run on all kinds of different systems. That's what the standard is about. Uh, all right. Uh, I don't know what you guys are doing, but go for it. Uh, okay. Uh, it's simlink to X. Uh, bin SH. Oh boy, it's a link to Bash. Yeah, if, if some people have done bin SH links to Bash, it's one of the reasons I hate Manjaro. Uh, it's it's a stupid decision, a stupid decision, to tell people that running, <laughs> unless there's something I don't know about, maybe it has multi-call uh, detection that it's running as SH and runs in SH mode. Maybe, 
But why would you bloat everybody else out that thinks they're getting regular shell? You saw the difference, you know, almost, you know, anyway. So just don't do it. Yeah. Yeah. I, why are you talking about that? We talked about that yesterday. Don't talk about editors today. <laughs> we did a whole day of editors yesterday. All right. So um, uh, difference between running and source. Okay. So um, I don't know which one to do first. I think let's do let's do running and sourcing a script right now. All right. So let's do that first. Um, running and sourcing a script. So uh, I'm going to put a mark here. So to run and source the script, um, I mean, if you're going to talk about stuff that's not on topic, do it with the exclamation point in front. All right. So um, here we go. We've got... Um, We've got our titles, you know, the thing that the, the little program that we're running, I didn't even really preconceive this thing. It just works. But you notice how I have to do dot slash titles, right? Now, what if, what if I want to run this program? What if I just type titles? Why can't I, why doesn't that work? Well, it doesn't work because it can't find it and it can't find it for a good reason. It's not secure, right? We only want to run things that we want to run. So like if I accidentally what wrote, you know, was editing the file, the command line, and I accidentally wrote titles, and it turned out that it was also a command, you know, that, that could be used by a hacker or somebody to do to run things that I might not necessarily want to be run. So so to prevent that, by default, uh, Unix and Linux systems force you to tell you exactly the, the path to the thing. Now, the path, we're going to use two different words, the terms for path. And this initial reference to path is is the path to the script. So in this case, dot slash titles, we know about dot, right? Dot means this directory right here. It says this directory right here slash title. So that's just easier to type. Whoops, I keep doing that, right? And, you know, it's just that, but, but there's another way to do this, PWD. Now I could type all of that. Now I'm going to show you a trick. So you remember how... Did we do backticks yet? I don't think we have. Anyway, so we'll do that with processes. Let me make a make a note. I have to make a note. I'm gonna forget. I am. I'm gonna forget. I don't want to forget. I don't want to forget. So 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 so. Uh, I need to do a schedule jobs. Okay. I mean somewhere in here. Background kind of job after it okay. We're gonna use yeah to um I it's a special variable. We haven't done variables yet, so we're not gonna do it. Never mind. Never mind, as you were. We'll talk about it when we talk about variables. Okay, so 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 we're gonna run titles here and there's our titles. Um now what if I'm one directory up and I wanna run titles? What do I do? I have to remember where I was, and I can CD dash to go back where I was. I was in boost CD dash. That toggles back and forth where you were, right? So boost slash titles. And I didn't have to write it. Why didn't I have to write uh, a dot there? And by the way, look what it gave me. It gave me all new titles. Why? Because I'm in a different place. I'm in a different directory now, right? So it ran the program, the current working directory. The present working directory, whatever you want to call it, is is right here, you know, with all this other junk in it. And so it ran the program from that other place, but it did it in the context of where I am right now, right? And and so the path had to change. Now notice I didn't have to put a dot in for there. I could still do that. That would mean starting from this directory, go into the boost directory, and then go into the titles directory. Right, and now I've got it. So that now you can you can do this all the way. So uh, I'm just going to show you. I would never do this, but you can type. This is called the full path. You type the full path to the thing boost slash title, uh, and that will run from here. Right, and the thing that's cool about that is, I, if you run that, you can go from any. You can go anywhere. So let's say I want to go into Zettelkasten directory. Now watch this, man. Watch this guy. Yeah, I know. Yeah, but we don't know about variables yet, so pretend like you didn't see that. Um, so here's one. Look at all that, man. Look at all. That's all the titles of my entire Zettelkasten. 
with that one script. Now, wouldn't it be convenient if I didn't have to type the path every time? And that's where the path environment variable comes from. So here is uh, the path environment. This is all my path. So these are all of the different directories into which I can put a file, an executable script or program that will run if it's found in the order of priority. Okay, and we're, when we get into customization, we're going to really show you how to do some cool things with your path uh, so you don't get redundancies in there and stuff using path prepend and append and stuff. But in, in this particular case, what we're going to do is um, we're going to put that title into, we're going to put that titles program someplace that is in one of those paths. Now, something else I can do is I can add this current directory to my path. And we haven't talked about the path at all yet. Uh, we will later, but I just want you to get the understanding that that's what's going on with the dot slash. Uh, you know, I'll just make a quick note here. Be very careful with your path. Please do not do this unless you're in a container. I wasn't even going to show path today because I know people will break their path and they won't be able to do anything, <laughs> which is really funny. And you only do it once and then you don't ever touch path again. <laughs> so when we talk about that, I want to, I want to be sure that we're supposed to cover that today. Um, I don't think we are, but yeah, we are. Okay. Put executables in your path. All right. So you're not going to understand the path fully because we haven't talked about variables yet. And this is why we had to get so quickly to shell scripting. A variable holds something. So you can just echo a dollar path. Uh, variables have the dollar in front of them. And that's really hard to read, right? So, uh, you, but you can read it. So any one of those things is is a place that you can have an executable. Uh, if you want to do a, a quick little trick, this is more for the advanced people out there. Let's see if I can remember it. Uh, this is, a, this is, this is a, a really a common trick. I'm going to replace the slashes with uh uh with backs with line returns um <laughs> did i do that right i always forget did i do it right i don't think i i don't oh wait it has to be i think it has to be this yeah there oh we have to do no we have to do um print print f no we have to do echo dashy <laughs> I, I've lost everybody. They're like, why are you doing this? Oh my gosh. I think I have to have two backslashes there. Yeah, there we go. Um, so actually we want to replace that. There we go. So that, <laughs> that says, instead of showing this guy, all right, look at how many times that took me to get that. I'm, I'm getting better. I, I almost remember every time, but that's called a parameter expansion. And there's some of the sexiest things you'll ever do in shell, uh, but it's not time yet. So, but I did want to show off and show you that. It's really fun. Uh, POSIX or bash. Yes. Okay. So Uber King, we're talking about shell scripting, not your interactive shell. I want to say that again, your interactive shell can be fish, Z shell, whatever you want. Bash is the default. Your shell scripting language is a different choice. And, and when you pick that, you probably should pick something that is very portable uh, with everybody. Even the Z shell community recommends writing POSIX so that, in fact, Z shell, the Z shell community are avid POSIX supporters because they support only a subshell, a subset of bashisms. And so if people use Z shell, they and they write bash scripts they get they don't work on z shell reliably so the z shell community actually is big they 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 really believe in posix uh and that means you just write you just put bin sh at the top and make sure it's an actual posix script all right so um if you guys are talking about editors please put that exclamation point in front all right so um next thing next uh i think we talked about the path so let me just show you what you can do. So if you were going to put this in your path, this is not the way to do it, but I'm, I'm just going to do it really quickly. So I'm going to put uh, uh, the current directory in the path, and I want you to see how dangerous this is. Do not do this long term. Uh, this says uh, to run, wait, path equals, I have to be really careful. I'm going to break my system. 
All right, so, so now I can do it. Now I can type titles and it just runs. Why? Because the current working directory is the very first thing that it looks at. When you're a beginner, I did this for many years as a beginner until I learned not to do this. This is a really, really unsafe, bad idea. If you are a, on a multi-user system, nobody is these days, but if you are, one of the best ways is to get the system administrator who's dumb, who put dot slash in his path. He'll he'll go into a directory and you, so you make, I'm going to show you how to hack somebody. You make a common command like ls, right? So what happens when I do this? What happens when I change the name of my program to ls? Now I type ls, what do I get? Did you see what just happened there? Where's my ls? Now, what if I put something bad in there? What if I put like something really bad in there? Yeah, it's shadowed. If I put if I put um you betcha and you, you can you can do all kinds of things in here. You could say uh how about this? You could say uh copy ls to password. Say the system administrator, you say you tell call up the system and say, I need my password changed. Can you see it in the directory and change my password for me? You can give you root access. I mean, seriously, there's there are so many ways that you can social engineer your way into root access if the person has been dumb enough to include dot slash in their path. Uh, so if you could do something like this, it's like it's like echo do something uh, uh, horrible with password. And here's how they won't even know exec password. So if you want to really, this is why you would never do this. So this actually does something and then does what it was normally supposed to do. So you come in here and in, and you hide it or something and maybe they don't notice if they're really not paying attention and say, okay, I'm going to change the password now. Password, uh, uh, I'm going to change my password. Do something horrible with the password. See that? Now, it actually looped. I forgot about that because there's already one called password. So this one would have to actually be, uh, which is, we have to probably use the full path. Uh, which password? That was recursive. Uh, oh, gosh. Uh, user bin PS. Here's the S bin. No, that's it. I don't want to change my password. I should have done this in a container. I'm going to be really sad. <laughs> I, I'm not following my own advice. So user bin and password if you want to do that. Otherwise, you're going to get an infinite recursion. That's what happened. So if I do pat, pat, sswd, uh, now it's going to it's going to do something horrible with the password and it's going to change the password. It's, it's, so as far as the admin's concerned, it's gonna, or whoever. So if you wanted to troll your friends or you want to write a hacker thing or you want, it's called Trojan. We just Trojan the password sort of. We didn't take over the exact actual one. That would be a true Trojan. But that's pretty damn bad. And I don't even have LS. I can't even LS anymore. <laughs> so how do I do this? Actually, there is a way. So uh, we're going to remove that LS. Yeah, well, first thing, we need to get my path back. We do. We need to get my path back. Uh, so I'm going to throw that shell away and come back to normal over here. So yay, now I can LS and I get everything. But as you can see, that's a problem. So the point is made, right? You got the point. Don't make it, don't use dot slash in your path, right? Um, I, if it's on the path, yes. The stuff in the front wins. Uh-huh, the stuff in the front wins. So, uh, and and that, you know, that can be used to be very dangerous. This is another reason I don't like user bin ENV. Because user bin env looks in your path. And the safer way to write a shell script is with an explicit full path. It's the absolute safest way to write code. Because that full path has to be there for it to run. When you use user bin env, if somebody has messed with your path or you've messed with your path incorrectly, then user bin env, you could make Python be whatever you wanted it to be. You could put it, you could somehow get Python in the path ahead of the actual Python. And then you could have it do something bad. And then you could have it run Python so they never know. 
This is why I don't like user bin ENV. It is a serious security flaw. If, if and people are pulling down scripts and running them on their s systems without even checking what's in the script using user bin ENV because it works everywhere. It's very, very dangerous to do that. And, and I don't care what anybody tells you. It's a really, really, it's as bad as putting dot slash in your path to do that. So yes, it would have to be taken advantage of. Yes, you can get around it and find your way to safely. But but why? Why would you open yourself up to that risk? I just don't understand it. And people do all the time. And I, I it just, that's a really bad idea. And now you understand why. Now you can tell somebody, well, user Benny and V opens you, opens you up to path exploits. That's all I have to say. And like, what are you talking about? Well, yeah, I mean, I can put Python in front of there anywhere in front of the path and it'll run my program and then, and you'll never know the difference. Oh, all right. So now you understand because you understand how the path works. Um, so the next, or you can take advantage of people who don't know this, <laughs> whichever one it's up to you. Um, so it's the next thing. The next thing is going to be, uh, <laughs> Hey, look, it's center boost. <laughs> It's 21 seconds left. It's like my T-Mux is telling me that it's 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 center boost day. <laughs> Why didn't anybody notice that before? I just told you I just told you how to sin with the Python environment. So I guess Ross <laughs> sponsor of the Oh now it's the Jinner boost. Look at this, it gets even better. Now it's the day of gin. Gin rummy or gin and tonic, whichever one you want. One second to the Jinner boost. All right, so I think I think we covered pretty much all of the the general getting ready to write good, safe scripts. Uh, but uh, <laughs> that's a great emoji, Juan. Um, so let's go back and look and see what we missed. Um, I know we need to talk about backgrounding processes. So that's coming. Oh, which and type. Okay, so let's talk about that really quick. All right, we already talked about which, right? So which ls, right? Um, Cheers to the Jinner boost. <laughs> yeah, so we have which ls user bin ls. Uh, if we have which, you know, hello, it will it will. There's no hello there. Now, something else I want you to see though is type. So type will give you the type of the thing. So I want you. This is really common one. You could probably look at this on your own system. So I want you to see that which always returns the path in the, the executable, to the executable from your path priority. Always. It never tells you what it is. And ls always tells you more details about what the thing is. And so I want you to be able to think about the difference between these two right away. Because one of the differences, the major differences is this. Which top? Okay, so I have a top, right? Type top. Oh, well, this is interesting. What does that mean? That means that means that I have a type program, right? A binary, but I also have top that's been alias to h top. If I want to use if I if I run top like this, I get h top. Well, that's not top. If I run user bin top, I get the real top, not the new one. All right, so, and the one way to get that, to do better than that, is to do sl backslash top, and I've talked to you about that before, that disables any aliases. So, once again, which top and type top. And you can actually use these things to, uh, yeah, you can use these techniques um, to, in scripting, to tell if you have a command so you can check for dependencies so if you need like yq or jq or something you could say do you have jq and you would do the command in my case i use top i use type all the time because i want to check and see if they have it but which is a more reliable way sometimes though the people have made things like ll you probably have ll on your system most people do uh that's an alias but it doesn't exist if you type which ll it'll be like i don't know i never seen it i don't know what that is so like I have one. Which one? Which one do I have? I have one called Z. I think. No, Z's a script. So let me think if I have one. Uh, w. Aliases. I don't know. I don't know which one of my aliases. I I can go find an alias. Oh wait 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 here one. Which K. Oh I do have. A 
<laughs> I'm trying to find one I don't. Git. No, I have a git too. I I I because I don't like aliases. Uh no, my my LS is an alias, yes. But I'm trying to find an alias that doesn't also exist. So uh type LS. So I've made my LS so that it always shows color. And it always does human readable. You can take over existing commands this way and make them do what you want. Kind of nice. Yeah, I don't have it. A lot of people, LL is a common one. So let me go actually go see. Uh, and we're getting kind of close to the end here. But um, So I redid all of my bash RC because we're getting ready to do it. It's down to one file. So here's a bunch of them. Okay, so, so I have an alias for D for Docker. Oh, well, there's one. My question marks. My question marks. Those are aliases. So that's going to be hard to type. But type question mark is an alias to duck. Okay. How about this? Which is there a question mark command? No. Here's one that'll freak you out. Which left bracket? That's actually a command, people. We're going to talk about that on Monday. That's an actual command. Mm hmm. <laughs> so uh, you type, like, what is it? It's a shill built in. But it's also a command. I know. You're like, what? <laughs> it's, it's pretty amazing. That's some old school. There's some good history there to talk about. It's kind of weird and esoteric. But we're going to talk about that until we get to conditions, which is next week. So we still need to do background processes, and we only have six minutes. So let's do that. Um, so backgrounding processes. Managing jobs. So we talked about managing jobs before uh, when we talked about uh, getting your terminal back and all the fancy things you can send to your terminal controls suspend and all that jazz we talked about it a little bit back then but I want to hit it again but this time I want to talk about it purely from the perspective of a running program a program that is running remember we did while true in our title a program that is running is a process a backgrounded running program is a job then and, and uh, strictly speaking, foregrounded too, but but backgrounded are generally referred to as jobs. That means they're running in the background. You're not aware of them. They're just happening, and you're being notified about them. Uh, and so there are many ways to background processes. Why would you do this? Uh, what's up with that? And as you can see on the system at any given moment, there's you know there's like tons. Of, of running processes. These are all processes. There's my OBS. You know, these are all processes that have been backgrounded that may or may not have a front end with with them. Okay. So so we've got that. We've got we've got a backgrounding process. Let's talk about how do you background why would you background something and how do you background something? So why would you background something? You don't want to background a process unless you have some reason to run something in the background. So most of the time, most people today do not have a need. Please, please don't forget your exclamation points. You're kind of throwing me off. Uh, so for backgrounding things, you want to make sure that you need to have it in the background. And most of the time, people don't need that. Most of the time, you just need another window. So I can have fishies over here and I can switch to another pane and we'll talk about Tmux eventually. But for all intents and purposes, Fishies has been backgrounded, but not really. I can just switch over and I can go back to it. Uh, uh, and so I, I, my, 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 uh, my family's here. They're being noisy. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, so here we've got, you've got Fishies running, but it's not running in the background, right? Now, I don't know why you would do this, but you can actually run the Fishies in the background. You put an exclamation, you put an ampersand after that. And now Fishies is running. Can't see it, but it's there. It's running. Fishies is running in the background. And I can for fast forward that. I foreground that. And now I got my Fishies. Another thing you can do with it is uh, Control Z. Control Z, put Fishies in the background and stopped it. Now, if I want to bring Fishies forward, I put foreground and it comes back and it's still there. And I told you about how a lot of people will use Control Z uh, to get out of EI and they think it's still there and end up having a bunch of stuff running that uh, that are that's not good. And then like I can't get out. Uh, not the fishes yet. So you can control control Z and it's in the background, and you can do something else, and then you can foreground. Now that particular thing is very useful. So the other day I was editing a settle cast and I have a script. And I was, I was editing a note in my Zettelkasten, and I wanted to go out and get something and look at something really quick. You can do that in VI, but 
I, in that case, I wanted to just get, now I could also, if I didn't have Tmux on there, I could just open another pane and go back to it. That's what I normally do. But I also could just, if I didn't have that, I could just control Z, do something here, top or PS or something like that, and then foreground it back and I got it there, it's still there. Now, if you if you accidentally have this, all this backgrounding stuff, by the way, it dates back to way before top was ever, in, or screen and Tmux were ever invented. So the, so the ideas of chopping up your window and moving around and do all that, this all predates that stuff because it was, in, it was a necessary, uh, it was, it was necessary to use a single, com you know, a single screen. So this was the first way in history that people were able to use more than one you know, the screen to do more than one thing and come back to that. And so it's left over. So, um, yeah, the OG all tab, it kind of is. So then you can type jobs and you can see that we have a stop job fishies. You can actually start the job. I don't even remember how to do it. I think you have to send it a kill. Uh, but you see it has, says jobs and I don't remember the commands for jobs. I'm just telling you what you, that, what you should know about. So jobs will tell you if you have something there. These days jobs is just to, usually is only needed to see if you've forgotten something in the background. Uh, if you exit, the jobs will die and it will tell you when you go out of it. It's like, you want to kill all these things and, and, you know, and you can do that. But, um, you can all, there's another command. There's another thing you can do called no hup. And when you, if you put no, I'm not going to do it, but if you put no hup in front of a command, like if I were to do this, all right, so if I were to do, um, so let's, let's control fat fishies. If I were to put, you don't ever do this, but if this, I just want you to know about it. So if, uh, this sound essay, yeah. So you could do no, uh, no hub, um, fishies. And then that, that, oopsie, no hub. No hub, and that means uh, ignoring input and appending output to no hub dot out. Oh my god, that's going to be a huge file. Um, yeah, it did. <laughs> so just don't use it. No hub is an. Oh my gosh, this is the fishies being drawn. Look at them. <laughs> so no hub is an ancient thing that is designed to allow you to log out of the machine and to put a job into the background and just let it run there. And the only time you would ever need to do that is if you wanted to run, uh, so let's say you were going to, you know, run some program that you wanted to be in the background and say so you would do fishies and you would put it in the background and that will run fishies in the background and you can always foreground it, right? But if you want it to stay around, even after you disconnect, then you would do no hub and, and you would then, um, just you would do that and then that thing would run in the background even if you leave the computer as long as the computer is still running it will be in the background and it tells you it tells you the 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 process number so that you can see the process number in the process table uh, which is all of the running programs that are that are on the machine so ps-ef uh, is one of the many ways uh, no, uh, yeah probably or something like that so so that's one way to background a process um, Another one, if you're like, if you're trying to run a server of some kind, like a web server or something, you might want to background that, um, and 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 such. Um, there is um, another thing you can sometimes do with the backgrounding thing is if you want to in a loop, you can actually uh, do a bunch of things at the same time in parallel, um, and so it actually allows you to have in concurrency and parallelism in shell, which is really amazing. And I'll show you uh, the difference between uh, rendering like 800 markdown pages as HTML uh, with ampersand and without it. And it's like crazy fast if you add it because it does them all at the same time. It makes them all into the background and they all run at the same time. And then they all end and it waits around for them to all finish. So, so there is all of that power even in shell, basic shell and bash. And that's been in POSIX since the beginning. All right, so so that's been a quick summary of that, and I think we're about on time. The one last thing, so pgrep ps slash proc we already talked about slash proc ps dash ef just shows you this is what you should go just go study it. It's it's one of the most storied you know historical commands in history. Does that even make sense? Because because it's changed so many times. AOX and this this it tells you your processes. Pgrep and pkill uh, are are more popular these days. Uh, so you can actually kill a process in the background 
So watch this. If I do fishies and I background it, whoopsie. Let's background fishies, right? So fishies is there. I can bring it back up. But if I, well, let's do it again. Fishies, foreground. All right, background, control Z. It's in the background. Why does it keep turning off my keys? Anyway, so, so it's still there, right? Jobs, it's all there. But now I'm going to kill it. So I know it's process ID up here. I could get it with PS2, but PS-EF, grep, fishies. We'll go look for that I process number. There it is. Wait, pearl fishies. Ooh, I have two fishieses. How come I have two fishieses? Um, oh, that's right. I have another one right here. <gasps> I have two fishieses. I forgot about that one. Okay. So we're going to kill it. Yeah, right. So how do you kill a process? Uh, you kill it. So you do kill and you give it the process ID. Be very careful with this command because it'll shut your machine down. You get the wrong process. You could boom and... The jobs. Do I have the jobs still? Oh, my fishies are still there. That means, oh, wait, my fishies didn't die. Why didn't my fishies die? Hmm. Well, I might have to be a little bit meaner. So how can I be more mean? So let's do kill dash H fishies. Is. <laughs> We're going to do, uh, yeah, I know about dash nine. So let's do kill, uh, what is it? Kill, um, what is the what is the command to give you all the signals? Is it dash H? Man kill. <laughs> Man kill. Oh, dash L. There it is. Man kill dash L. So I need to put kill dash L in there too. Uh PS and uh, that's not particularly the right order. Uh and kill dash L. So here's all the signals. We're gonna get. We're gonna talk a lot about signals when we do coding. Uh, but these are all the different signals you can send back and forth between running programs, processes. Uh, Sig Hup says, kind of nicely, hang up and go away. Uh, whenever you do a Control C, you send a Sig Int. Where is it? A Control C sends sends a Sig Int. Where are you? It's a. Where are you? There it is. Two. So SigHub says, hey, this is a nice request for you to hang up and restart. Usually that's what people will do with that. SigInt means, no, you, you you need to go stop now. But people trap that all the time and then tell you what to do. And then they go down. It's like, did you mean this? And and then you got all these other SIG, SIG trap, uh, SIG illegal process, like illegal memory access, pipe closed. But then here's the real doozy, kill dash nine. This is like, no, just die. Just die. I don't care what you're doing. I'm, I'm your boss, I'm boss of you, I'm boss of you process, you are going to die, and so you're going to kill it. So we're going to try that, because reasons, I want to see what's going on here. Grab fishies. So kill dash nine, because I tried to be polite. I tried, don't you dare do that. Uh, I tried to be really polite, but it just did not work. That will kill everything. Nicer. Uh, yeah, is that a little bit nicer? Uh, must be process or job ID. Oh, wait. <laughs> Did I put fishies? Did I actually do that? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Bye-bye, fishies. Wait, it's still there. No, it's not. <laughs> oh, look. It died, but it still left the screen populated. Check it out. It's dead. See down here? It's dead. <laughs> it's totally dead. But... You know, rip fishies. So anyway, now you know all about processes. If, if you want to see all the processes that have fishies in the name, you can do pgrep. And it will tell you fishies. Dynamite fishing. I know. You can do uh, all kinds of things with that. I mean, it's dead. You know, so you can, I mean, you can, that. so now you know. You can pkill. Pkill is pretty dangerous because if it matches something you don't expect, always do a pgrep first. So pgrep pearl. So there. So the reason it didn't get fishies is why? Because it's an interpreted script. So the thing that's actually running is pearl. If you do this, if you do pgrep dash l, it'll show. What is it dash l or is it a? I think it's. Is it a? I think it's a. Yeah. So this tells you everything. Say say this is pearl. It's running the fishies program, uh, and and there's this process ID. That is the one in the background, right? So remember, just to check, it's still here. <gasps> oh, wait, where'd it go? Oh, we killed that one too. We killed both of them. <laughs> wait, wait, 
Where are you? Oh my gosh, they're all dead. Okay, well, there you go. So they're all dead. Now, believe it or not, you can actually get zombie processes. This is a thing. And if you, I'm going to tell you to go research it because we're done. We're past, we're over time. But processes are really fun. And you, in order to be a good system administrator, you got to really be able to know how to control those processes and what to do with them and how to stop them and start them and save your system. That's why top is such a thing. In fact, you can actually use HTOP uh, to go down here and kill the different um, the different programs over here. You can just kind of go through it and find the program you want to kill. And you can just do it that way if you want to try to save your system. Like I could stop OBS right now and stop streaming just right from here. So uh, all of this stuff applies to every computer you've ever used. It's just you're just not, maybe not as aware of it. And it's maybe not directly in your face um, as much. Uh, if you kill one, your whole system will reboot. Yeah, because that's you can do it. Try it. <laughs> Should we try it? All right, let's do it. Now, aren't you glad you have a container? Let's do it. Let's let's do a container, Ubuntu. So I'm going to run this in a container so that I don't die. PS-EF. Now, this is, once again, I'm going to say again, look at how many, there's so few processes. So if you're learning, this is the best way to learn because you're not inundated with too many processes, right? Plus, you can do crazy, crazy stuff that you should ever do. Please make sure you're in a container if you do this. <laughs> Watch me stop streaming. <laughs> I know, I'm scared. I, I This is a really dangerous command. I don't even want to do it. Uh, first of all, I don't think it's going to work. Yeah, because it's not a dash nine. It's like, no, 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 no. You don't want to do that, I promise. It's like, the machine's like, no, I swear, you really, really don't want to do that. <laughs> you really don't want to do that. I'm like, no, I really do. I really do. What? Oh, it respawned because of a knit. Oh, that is great. We found something out today. We did. We found something out today, people. Uh-huh. It respawned. Parent ID zero. When has that been a thing? Is that a? I don't remember that. I wonder if I wonder if that's a a new. Um, well, and it and it is a systemd thing. It's, I'm, I'm I'm above. The, this is all the, how your system starts up. It used to be start with a nit. Now for the last like eight years now, systemd is a big debate. They used to have uh, to erase system files with whoever would add erase more files. The system going down. Ooh, yes, that's really fun. And it three, we're not gonna do that. No, 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 we're not doing that. Spooky, don't do that. Don't do anything spooky says. <laughs> let's let's do this though. Kill dash nine. I wonder if you can kill zero. Uh you can't. Holy cow. I, that's the first time I would have ever even attempted that. I actually think it no, it's not because the S time didn't even change. Which means it hasn't it hasn't it didn't it didn't go down at all. Holy moly. Holy moly. I wonder if it's because it's a container. You'd have this is something you would want to try on your on a a a a you know a beater computer and try to do that. It's a very bad idea. Very, very bad idea because it'll force your computer to crash and that leaves your disk in a weird state and everything. So don't do it. Uh we're okay to test the kill. You have to be in look, first of all, it's not it's not even worth testing because I just did it. Um but it is worth testing. You can kill other things. So if you write a little script, right? So you can do this. Uh, do we have Tmux on here? No, I have to install it all. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Let's just, let's do while true do echo one. No, echo dash n. No, wait, printf one. I'm just playing. Printf one sleep uh, one done. And I'm going to put that whole thing in the background. And see, it's printing ones. See? It's printing ones. And no matter what, it'll still keep printing a one, even though it's in the background. So how do I kill it? This is a great way to practice your containers, guys. Yeah. One, 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 one. It's still in the background. So I can foreground it and kill it. Or... <laughs> If you now, this is where you would control L to clear your screen. You know, I know you're not supposed to do that. I don't like it, but this is one of those ways. Uh, more background music. What? No, there's background music. This is the middle of a boost. We're about done with a boost, Lord Azrael. Yeah. Uh, okay. So 
It's still doing it. I need it to stop. PS-EF. Okay. Ooh, I got all these processes running. Which one should I kill? Which one should I kill? Which one should I kill? This one right here, right? So kill <laughs> space. Now 58 is <laughs> kill or we could kill job one. That's probably better. That's the proper way to do it. We could either kill job one, which is a percent sign. Thank you for Zeg for telling us. Because I forgot that you can kill jobs. I just don't do that. You can put percentage in front of the job number and kill the right job number. Or uh, you could do uh, kill space and then 13. You can't tell, I know, but it's going to kill that job. And now job should say, I'm not around anymore. And it tells you what happened to it. That's kind of cool. Uh, and there's music and terminal, terminal animations. Yes. Yep, because that's me working, as it says in my about page. Um, so, uh, so, so there we go. We've got lots of good stuff here going on. We can exit out of that. And I believe we've covered the bases. So, uh, job, PS, proc, kill, PS, slash, proc, cron job. Okay. Uh, just know, just learn, you're going to have to practice with cron tab. Make sure you're in a container to do that. Okay. Uh, a cron tab is something that allows you to put uh, a job that runs in the background that starts up at a given time. It doesn't have to be always running. Cron ta tab is always running, but you want to learn about that. But I, I'm, I was kind of on the fence about whether I should put cron tab there because you need to know how to edit files and you don't, well, you know that a little bit, but it's really easy to get screwed up with cron tab. Um, what cron tab will do is it will, it will, uh, I should probably put a thing here. Um, so uh, edit, a uh, file, I say, so I'm going to say, use a uh, cron tab. Uh, all right, I'm just going to have to show you. Cron tab, oops, cron tab dash L. We'll show you, there's no cron tab, if there is. And, and then, so just do man cron tab. It's actually better for you to have it in a file so you don't blow it away and then load it from a file. I'd really strongly encourage you to do that. Um, so yeah, or else use one of the systems. Yeah, use, use cron tab uh, with a file to preserve uh, backup. And, and that's something you want to read about. And, and I'm not gonna, we're not gonna cover that today. We're gonna, um, but if anybody wants to do it, that's a good way to like send a letter to somebody or to check to see you know, to do a report on it. Uh, if you want to run a, like a tripwire program of some kind, you can write a script to check for detect people who've hacked your box. That's how I caught both people who hacked me. And if you can you do all kinds of fun things with it. So take a look at that and we'll we'll start up with shell scripting on day 14. Um, I am going to leave for the night. So on this beautiful Friday night. So I'm going to give all this attention to somebody else over here. Um yeah, you will use crontab a lot uh, at work. Now, you probably want to use Etsy crontab, uh, and I just don't know how much to go into that with a beginner. Uh, again, the idea here is how you would possibly have jobs backgrounded, and I just wanted to mention cron job, crontab uh, uh, is, is just a way... I wanted to just mention that this is one of the ways... Uh, to put something in the background. I didn't want to go, it's not an exhaustive lesson. You know, oh, let's, let's actually put that. Um, uh, editing your uh, cron tab. Uh, let's see. Cron tab uh, is another uh, topic. Okay, so, so that's not, a, it's not really a beginner topic. Just know that it's there. All right. How's that? Does that sound fair? <laughs> because it, it's you. We could spend like an entire night just on CronTap. So it's more of a system administration thing. But now you know it exists, and that's the purpose of Boost. All righty. Um, hope everybody has a great week. Uh, is there anybody out there who has recommendations for um, the Mutt Mansion? Is that somebody you wanna you wanna? Um, <laughs> 
<laughs> I don't know if I want to ra- raid them. Uh, it's great to see you, Delight Bamba. Bam Bam. Delight Bam Bam. <laughs> Let's see if we can find some more fun. Uh, I mean, we got all these fun viewers, but we should probably go give somebody some attention. I, I personally am, I've been coding like crazy all day. I'm going to relax, probably fall asleep, and I will be on tomorrow coding like crazy again. Uh, so, so, <laughs> what? What is that? What is that? So, thank you. Uh, I am going to, I'm going to do the thing again. So if you want to sponsor me, if you're great, great, you want to do that, you go to github.com slash Rob, uh, for as well as two bucks a month. If you're going to do that, sponsor or subscribe and all that stuff. Uh, if you, if you do it on GitHub, it's, it's preferable to, to Patreon. I have Patreon as well. Uh, but otherwise just tell people about what we're, that we're here, pass the word on. Uh, that's the best way you can give back. If you want to, if you actually want to participate in helping me code or prepare the lessons or, or put markers in the videos or any of these things, uh, as a way to give back, um, those are all options as well. Uh, you know, send me a, a whisper or email me or whatever you want to do. All right. So let's go back to, uh, host Jonathan Blow. Who is that? Is that a person? Is that a, is that is that somebody is that a Twitcher type of person, a Twitcher? Is that a, is, can we call him Twitters? Oh, he's a programmer. Is he on right now? Oh, is Strager's on too. We haven't raided Strager in a while. Yeah, yeah. There's Mr. Strager. Oh, J Blow. Yeah. Uh, see him griffing. I like. I like. Man, lots of good people. Oh, Downright's on. Hasn't been on for a while. Oh, Zorch hasn't been on for a long time. Is he actually doing something? If he is, I'm going to rate him because he hasn't been on for a very long time. I like being able to spread the... Freckled Science is awesome too. Lots of awesome people here. Uh, I, I He's doing assembly. I, I got to talk to him. I, I got to talk to him because it changed the entire terminal experience. <laughs> It's amazing, isn't it? It's like, you know, it's a small thing. Um, uh, okay, so let's... I'm going to turn him on here. I mean, you know what I mean. Worked your magic. Oh, my God. You're a sad oh, he's playing a game. You know that? I was her age when you killed my father. He's definitely playing a game. Oh my God, you did, didn't you? I mean, we can oh raid a game. Is there somebody who's oh not n- normal? <laughs> Threat head. Ooh, cyber security's here. I can't raid him. You know why? Because he banned me. Day to day basis, but what the ultimate goal is. This is how he. Ba- this is why he banned me. By the way, this is the reason this dude banned me. I'm gonna keep showing this every time. I said CISSP is absolute shit. Unless <laughs> I probably should say, unless you're going into IT management, uh, I completely agree with that. Uh, I cannot disagree more with the structured training path. Objective evidence to the contrary in both project and comprehensive counts up to ten sponsors from corporate backing the stream so far. So that's why they had enough. I was calling them out for all of the sponsorship and for telling them that you can you don't need to pay for a CISSP. And so he banned me. He banned me for calling him out for his. He's also been he's also been kicked off Reddit for sponsoring for trying to steal stuff. You guys, just watch out for that. There's so much of that on Twitch that's happening that no one's even telling you about. And I will always tell you if I'm being sponsored. Try to Azure try to sponsor me. So I'm gonna skip. I, I he was just on, so it just came across my. I had to say it again. I'm gonna say it a lot. You guys are gonna get tired of me hearing it because I'm gonna keep calling him out on it because it's not cool. It's not cool. It's not cool to lie to people because you're getting paid and tell them that something's good, but it's not. That is, it's particularly on Twitch. If if you're being, if it's an advertising thing, that's a different thing. If you if it's an advertisement and you know it's an advertisement, but if you're being paid under the table to tell people that this is the only way to do it, that's downright unethical. All right. So, can we find somebody happy to to, to stream? Just to, I, this is the hard part. I don't like rating. I know I don't like it because it's so hard to find good people. To, I mean, there's so many good, great people to raid, but I like to, I, I like to, you know, I don't know. I'd like to spend a little bit more 
time. Uh, we'll, 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 we'll raid Strager. Steve, I haven't, you know what? I raided Strager last, so let's do Sam Griffin. He's, he's really awesome, too. Uh, fix some bugs on some open source stuff. Let's do that. Uh, I mean, Sam Griffin and I disagree on, you know, some tech things, but other than that, he's awesome. I mean, I... Well, he's fixing a drink, of course. <laughs> a drink. I just cannot win. I cannot win. Who's there? Who's this? Wait. Oh, freckle science. No. Uh, Apple 40 core desktop coming. Oh, Linus the stack. Yeah, we're not raiding him. Uh, I mean, he's a nice guy and all, but um, compiler partly. I would almost raid him. Uh, I, 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 I just. I wouldn't have a beer with this guy. <laughs> He's probably fantastic coder. Um, I, I there's a there's only a few, I mean I'm sure people feel this way about me. There's a few people on 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 Twitch that I just can't stand to listen to them, and it has nothing to do with them as a human being. <laughs> it doesn't have anything to do with 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 how smart they are. It's just it's just a personality thing, and I absolutely know that there's people who think that about me. So and that's okay. That's totally okay. Uh, Jill Jill's on. Wait, why why don't I not have Jill on my in my thing? I should probably have her on on here. I th I thought I was maybe I'm mixing him up. Oh, I've never followed Jill. Oh, drawing comics. Ooh. Ooh, I like this a lot. I want to follow this is awesome. I want to follow this. My uh my wife's uh all we need is uncensored beer talk with Rob. <laughs> not right now <laughs> this is still a video that's going to go on youtube so you know what let's go ahead and raid her be very quiet be very quiet we're going to sneak up on her i love doing that i can't do the elmer fudd voice or i would go for it nobody even knows what elmer fudd is raise your hand if you know elmer fudd <laughs> <laughs> just <laughs> all 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 how many how many people we have left 43 whole people 44 whole people 46 people are still hanging on let's do it <laughs> uh-huh We're doing the Twitch. There he comes. Our big trade. I make robots. Oh, wow. This is cool. Cool stuff. Cool, cool stuff. Bird, bird, son. Oh, birdie, bird, son. Thank you. Oh, this is goodness. amazing. We're here. This is a raid, raid, hi, hi. <laughs> hi, delay. She's so happy. It's awesome. Suicide Ninja, nice drawing. Thank you. Wow. HL is now following me. <laughs> this is some good stuff. Great art style. Thank you. Ivory Jam. I just started drawing on Twitch, and already we've got two raids today. This is definitely a bigger raid. What? Great art style, not a cult. I've seen it somewhere before, but can't place it. Um, yeah, it could be. Uh, I mean, I haven't done any published work for a very long time, so I've actually uh, started drawing again after like years of not drawing. Um, my son does game art. I'll have to have him watch you. Nice. It's been a while since I saw some good comic. Excellent. Um, I guess, I mean, I do draw like a lot, like I do have a lot of influences that are probably recognizable. So you might be responding to that maybe. I saw another follower, but I missed who it was. I'm sorry. Ah! 
I was just about to switch pens because I was trying to ink this background with a fountain pen and was getting a little aggravated. So I'm going to switch to a Micron. Man, this is so cool. I, I have to go, though. This is so cool. I'm glad we found Jill. Wonder if this All right. See you guys.